Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Right, in the previous video, I showed you how to rotate or renew your Kubernetes cluster certificates using kubadm search renew command. The video that I did last week was based on a single node Kubernetes cluster, right? So a few of you asked me to do the same kind of process and show us how to do that on a multi-master Kubernetes cluster. Basically, the process is quite simple. So whatever I've shown you in that single master node, you just have to do the same thing on all the individual masters. So let's dive straight into it. So if I search in YouTube for just me, renew search Kubernetes or whatever, then you will see this video, Cube 105, Renewing Kubernetes Certificates with KubeADM. So I would advise you to watch this video because I'm not going to explain every single step that I did in this video because I've already explained it. So go ahead and watch this video and it's going to be exactly the same. The only difference is we'll be doing this one by one on each master node. Okay, so the environment, the setup, the virtual machine, the cluster setup for this video is going to be the one that I did in one of my videos. So again, if you search in YouTube for just me hutch a kubernetes you should find cube 1.5 there it is set of highly available kubernetes cluster step step by step with keep alive d and hutch a proxy so that's exactly the environment that i'll be using for today's demo All right so let me mute it it's already muted All right so that's the setup we've got a virtual ip that will be assigned between the two hutch a proxy load balancer nodes using keep alive d so whichever uh, node is up, it will take over that virtual IP. Keep Alive D will initially assign this virtual IP to one load balancer node. And if that node goes down, the Keep Alive D process on the other Hache proxy takes over and uses this virtual IP. And whichever node happens to have this virtual IP will serve the traffic to the backend 3K master node. So that's the setup that I did. And for completeness sake, I included one worker node. So that's exactly the same setup that I've got for this video as well. And if I show kubectl get nodes, I've got three master nodes, kubectl cluster info. You can see the API server endpoint is 172.16.1600, which is the load balancer IP. I don't know which one it is pointing to. It could be load balancer one or load balancer two. If I show you my virtual machines, I'm running this in libvirt kvm, so you can see two load balancers, three k master, and one k worker. So that's going to be the basis for this demo. Right, let's create some workload, okay? So kubectl create, deploy nginx, image, image, nginx, sorry, minus minus image, nginx, and let's have two replicas running. All right, that's done. kubectl get pods, containers getting created. I assume both these spots will be running on K worker one because we only have one worker node and we have pains on all the master nodes so we won't be able to schedule workloads unless we tolerate the taint. Yep, both these spots are running on K worker one. That's fine. I just want to show you that how our process of renewing the certificate, whether it's going to affect our ability to connect to the cluster or not. All right, so I'm gonna run a watch command so this command is going to run every couple of seconds and then do a kubectl get pod. So while we are going through this certificate renewal process, we will keep an eye on this one. Okay, I'm also going to open up another pane. Let me show you, let me tell you why in a second. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to log into my first master node, kmaster1, kube admin is the password if you're using my Vagrant environment. All right, so if I do kubeadm search check expiration, Right, so we have all the certificates generated at 16.55. So now it's 19, sorry, 18.55, 6.55 p.m., five minutes to seven. And now it's 19.09. Okay, so I brought this cluster up like 10, 20 minutes ago. All these are at 18.55. And if I do ls minus latr, etc, kubernetes, pki, and you can see all the certificates, including the HCD ones, were generated at um, 1855. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to renew or regenerate the certificate just for the API server component. Kubernetes search check expiration. So I'm on kmaster1. So I have this API server component. So I can do kubeadm search renew 
API server so that will just regenerate the certificate for the API server component and then we have to restart the API server okay or I could do kubadium search renew all that will regenerate the certificates for all these things but uh, again I have to go ahead and restart the API server HCD controller manager scheduler everything but to keep things simple the process is exactly the same as I showed in the last video this time let's go with just the API server but before that I have an echo command which I explained in my previous video so basically I'm using OpenSSL S client command to pull the certificates for this endpoint which is the API server endpoint going through the Hache proxy one of the load balancer node again using an OpenSSL command to grab the end date or the expiry date of the certificate if I do that so basically 172.16.1600 is the IP address of my load balancer so every time I run this command it's going to connect to one of the master node K master node behind so each time I should get connected to the different master nodes in round robin fashion okay so if I into that so it's 1859 it's clearly not this one so this api server the certificate was generated uh, at eight, um, 1855 and it's expiring in a year's time 2022 so the one that i've got is 1859 probably this one is 1855 so four minutes later so i guess this one is k master one so that's the control plane where i did cubadium in it so the certificates were generated at 1855 and then i added k master 2 and k master to three to this cluster so the certificate you see in k master 2 and k master 3 will be like few minutes later all right so pro probably this one is like k master 2 or k master 3 again if i run this command again now so 1855 so now i think it's connected to k master 1 and again 1858 so that's another time so it must be k master 2 or k master 3 so you get an idea so each time i run this command because i'm going through the load balancer it round robins the three master node behind so you get to see the different expiry date the different time the certificates were generated right again let's run this through the watch command so every couple of seconds we are checking the certificate expiry connecting through the load balancer right kubadium search renew api server i'm just going to renew the API server on K master one, one of the master node. Let's do that. That's done. And if I do etc Kubernetes manifest, sorry, not manifests, PKI, that's where the certificates are stored. You can see the API server's certificate and key pair was generated at 1913. I do PS minus EF grep for api server so i have the api server component running that but i need to restart it okay so i'm using container d as the container runtime in my kubernetes cluster so i'm going to be using cri ctl command to interact with the container d runtime if you're still using docker as the runtime you could use docker ps to see which containers are running on your node All right so in order to use cri ctl i need to tell the cri ctl command where the container runtime endpoint is so i have to export an environment variable or you need to pass minus r option to every single cri ctl command so i find this one handy so i just export the variable up front and then i don't have to use it on every single cri ctl command container runtime endpoint equals unix three forward slashes var run container d container d dot sock and then now i can do cri ctl pods right similar to docker ps you can run cri ctl ps that will list all the containers but cri ctl pods will list all the pods right so we have QB API server K master one that's the one we are going to restart either you can stop this container using CRI CTL remove it and wait for the kubelet to relaunch it or the other easiest way less messy way is to go into ATC Kubernetes manifest directory that we have the manifests for its CD API server controller manager scheduler just move the API server manifest to a different directory for example temp I do CRI CTL pods and if you keep doing CRI CTL pods the cube API server came also it usually takes about 10 to 15 seconds for the kubelet to find that the uh, manifest has gone missing and it's going to delete the pod stop and delete the pod okay so now we can see cube API server came master one container D has stopped the pod and it will take a few more seconds to completely remove this pod so if I keep refreshing it 
Yep, so that's completely gone and still we have access to the Kubernetes cluster. We haven't lost access. Still we have KMoster 2 and KMoster 3 serving. So we haven't lost the connection to the Kubernetes cluster. And now let's move this back. And if I do PS minus EF prep for API server, there's clearly no API server running on this master node. So now I can move the API server manifest back into this directory. And if I do CRICTL pods, you can see QB API server game master one started one second ago and it should all be fine. And back in here, you see 1913. So that's the certificate that we renewed on this machine. So if I do QBDM search check, expiration and you can see everything except api server still is the same 1855 and api server was regenerated at 1913 so we've rotated the certificates we've regenerated the certificate for the api component api server component in one of the master machines so we just have to do the same thing on the other two let's do let's go ahead and do that quickly exit out and go to 102 which is k master 2 cube admin is the password cd to etc kubernetes manifest All right so if i grab for api server you have api server running kubadium search check expiration All right everything is 1859 let's renew the api server one kubadium search renew api server that's done Check for expiration, it's now 1918, okay? Export container runtime endpoint equals Unix var run container d container d dot sock CRI CTL pods. We have cube API server on KMaster 2. Let's move cube api server to slash temp cri ctl pods cri ctl pods it's still there cri ctl pods okay so that has gone to not ready state which means the pod has stopped and if we give it a few more seconds it should completely remove the container and then we should be able to bring it back okay so that's gone let's move it back to etc kubernetes manifest cri ctl pods cube api server k master started one second ago kubedium search check expiration so that's 1918 and we have 1858 1918 so that's the one that's uh, been renewed in k master 2 that's working fine so finally if we go to 103 and kubadium search check expiration so everything is at 1858 kubadium search renew api server and do a check expiration now it's 1921 export container runtime endpoint equals war run container d Entity.soc, CRI CTL port. So we have Cube API Server KMaster 3, CD to ETC Kubernetes manifests, move Cube API Server to temp, PS minus EF, prep for API Server. It's still there, CRI CTL ports. It hasn't taken down the pod yet. Cool. Cube API server came out to three. Pod stopped. Container stopped. Not ready. Let's give it a few more seconds. CRI CTL pods. Okay. So now that's completely gone. If I do PS minus EF grab API server. Yeah, that's completely gone. Let's move it back. Cube API server to ADC Kubernetes manifest. CRI CTL pods. Yep, keep API server back one second ago and grab for API server. The new API server started a couple seconds ago. All right, and let's do kubedm search check 
expiration it's 1921 and we should be able to see that here as well 1913 1918 1913 so just going between k master 1 and k master yeah 1921 k master 3 all right so throughout this process we never lost a connection to our cluster so that's because we've got a hache cluster serving all of our api traffic through the load balancer and the load balancer was also set up in a redundant fashion and one thing i missed doing which i would highly recommend you to do is before doing kubadium search renew you just make a backup of the etc kubernetes pki directory and then etc kubernetes let me show you ATC Kubernetes and take a backup of all these configuration the cluster admin kube config file controller manager scheduler.conf and then everything under PKI which I think I've shown in the previous video but I didn't do it uh, this time uh, but I assume you already have in your production system some form of automated backups for all your cluster certificates and components and everything manifest and things like that so that concludes this video and uh, hopefully you found this useful let me know if you've got any questions I'll be happy to help I will see you all in my next video until then keep learning and keep on learning bye bye